Inside this video right here, we're gonna talk about exactly how to use a Life Pack 12. I'm even gonna show you some hidden features you might not know about. Let's dive into it. I want to help decrease failure rates for NREMT, for EMT school, for paramedic school. Watch these videos, watch this content, and believe me, you will start to understand EMS medicine. Anybody out there that wants to serve their community as an EMT or a paramedic should be able to do that. And I'm here as a paramedic coach to help you achieve that. Hey everyone, it's Paramedic Coach here, back at you with another video. Be sure to annihilate, smash that like button, and if you are new here, be sure to hit subscribe and tap uh, that notification bell. Go ahead, do it now. This is where you wanna be. Today, we're talking about how to use a life pack, how to use a heart monitor. Uh, there's life pack, there's Zoll, there's all kinds of uh, monitors. Everywhere I've ever worked, I've used a life pack. So we're gonna talk about the life pack, and I actually have my own. Uh, Life Pack 12 I just purchased here. So we have an outside pouch, two back pouches. We have a side pouch and then a pouch in here. So here's how, how I do it. Obviously, you have your EKG paper right here, okay? I'll just show you here. So inside here I have my, I'll just show you. So we have here our 12-lead uh, EKG cables here, okay? This completes that 12-lead EKG right here, okay? Uh, over here, we're, as you can see, we have our our lead cables. Okay, these are our main you know, like three or four lead cables. Now, in here would actually be your uh, blood pressure cuff. So right here, there's a BP cuff that sticks into here. You would actually put that uh, right in right into here. Okay, if you can see here now, I have a manual in there. I have a BP cuff ordered and it's coming in. So for now, I have the uh, manual just stick in here for now. So we come through here. The next thing you're gonna see right here is a, a connection here for a pulse ox, SPO2. And it'll show you a waveform on here. Um, I have that cord coming in as well. For now, I have a finger pulse ox right here that does the same job right here, okay? So you can see I got my leads in here, BP cuff, pulse ox. Now we come over here, I'll show you this side. I hold this up. Over here, I have a glucometer. So I take the glucometer on the, on the uh, right side here. And then whatever pack of electrodes I have open sticks out right here, okay? Next, I'm gonna open this up. Just gonna pop it open for you. There we go. So in here, we have the pads. Okay, so the pads connector, okay? And then it actually kicks in to the pads right here. Quick combo pads. So you have adult and pediatric. Pads that we go in here. You're gonna do one on both sides, however you want to do it. And this is how I set up my life pack. You might do it differently. Hey, uh, if you're a medic watching, uh, comment down below. How do you set up your uh, life pack or your Zoll monitor? Um, this is how I set up mine. So let's go to the back here. So here's the back. Okay. Now in here, the top uh, top uh, portion here, I actually have what's called an entitled CO2. Okay, so you can see that there. Okay. So this actually connects in. So this right here connects in Entel CO2, this orange piece connects in right here, okay, with the CO2. So we have Entitle, SpO2, blood pressure hookup, EKG hookup, okay? This is where the pads hookup is, okay? Those are all your, your hookups, if you will. Then finally, I'll show you the back, okay? So the back of here, we have a pouch like this, okay, I'll just show you. This opens up. Now here I keep all uh, spare electrodes. Um, some people will keep uh, other blood pressure cuffs back here as well. Uh, spare battery, stuff like that. And then finally back here you have the actual batteries. Okay, for the life pack. Okay everyone, so as you can see here, I've zoomed in here. I'm gonna let my audio take over so you got a good picture of what we're doing here with the monitor. Now you can see here we have the, the heart rate of 72. We have normal sinus rhythm. This is lead two. We have the time right here that it is, and the batteries charging, the battery charge. And then we have also here um, uh, what the monitor charge is set to. Doesn't mean we're doing anything yet. I'll show you how to do that later. Just what the settings are showing. So now, let's say you wanna print this EKG out to read the EKG. Now, quick tip. You can see what it, what it is in the monitor here by looking at it, but I always recommend, if you're gonna do any sort of what EKG is at, 
You always print it out and read it, always. So I'm gonna hit print once. When I hit print once, it's gonna print out an EKG. I'm gonna let that go for about six seconds. Hit print again. Okay, when you hit print the second time, it stops. So here's our EKG, I'm gonna just, now we, this is actually very important. Just rip it off, people struggle with this. You take it from the corner and you pull it down like this. See? That's how you do it, okay? Now here's our EKG. I'll just show you here. Okay, you can see that pretty, pretty cool. There's our EKG. Now I'm reading it here, I'm looking at my, my strip, and you're always gonna look at lead two, okay? Now, if you want to change the leads on here, I'll just show you. But if you want to change the leads on here, you hit lead. You can actually change, see right now I'm looking at the, the, the paddles. I actually have a simulator hooked up showing you this rhythm, this uh, 72. See, I can change on the, on the screen here the leads I'm looking at. So I can go here to 2, 3, and AVF again. I can change which leads I'm looking at by scrolling through here. Pretty cool. So all you, all you do for that is you hit lead and select the lead you want to look at. Okay, so I usually keep it at 2, 3, and AVF. Okay, over here is the size. So I can change the size of the EKG on the screen, making it smaller or making it bigger. All right. Now I always recommend keeping it at 1.0. That's gonna be what your, your normal EKG is gonna look like. I, I never mess around with these settings. I usually just keep it at 2.3 AVF and the size alone. Now, if you wanna do a blood pressure on the patient, you're gonna connect your uh, blood pressure tubing into right here, into NIB, okay? Non-invasive blood pressure, okay? So you're gonna put this in right here, okay? This will be a tube you put in. Place the cuff on the patient, and all you do is hit right here, click the button here, and it starts going, doing a blood pressure, okay? So that's how that works. It will get its reading, it will pump up on the patient, and then it will give you a reading, okay? So now we're gonna talk about the 12-wood EKG. To show you this, I'm actually gonna do it on myself. So you have your, your extra 12 lead cables over here. I'll show you. You can see them here, okay? Then this actually connects right into here. So we take this off on the, the primary lead set. We connect this right into here and snap it in, okay? Now we have all the leads connected. So I'm actually gonna take these leads, do a 12 lead on myself right now. Pretty cool. Uh, we have up here the AED mode. So I can go like this and hit advisory. Okay, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit analyze. So it's gonna actually analyze the heart rhythm to see if it's shock it or not. So here we go, so we're gonna hit analyze. Connect electrodes. Right, so what we're gonna do right now is actually connect the pads up and I'll just show you. So we're gonna connect our pads. Push analyze. Right, and then it will actually tell you how to use it. So push analyze. Analyzing now. Stand clear. Just analyzing the rhythm. No shock advised. Start CPR. And then see, you can actually see here the, the life pack will actually put you through um, actually an AED and, and follow the steps. Pretty cool, right? So you can see here, I have it on uh, asystole right now, as you can see here. and. That's why it's saying start CPR, it's showing asystole, right? So that's how you do it. So that's how I'm gonna shut this off, the advisory. All right, so let's, say, so let's just say this patient right now is in uh, VTAC, right? So what we're gonna do next is I'm, I, I'm not gonna actually hit the charge button, I'll show you now. So I'm gonna hit charge. 
So first, select the energy 200 joules, I'm gonna charge. It's gonna charge it up. Then you actually hit the shock button to do it. Now let's say we want to go ahead and pace this patient, right? Remember, first we need to get electrical capture followed by mechanical capture. Electrical capture means that the screen is basically showing that it's being paced to the rhythm. Now, mechanical capture means the pulse matches that rhythm. So let's say this patient was unstable. Let's say they were altered, they had a low blood pressure, let's say 80 over 40, and they're in second degree type one. We gotta pace. So first, we put the pads in the patient and we have our EKG wires on. We hit pacer. First, we choose the rate. So we're gonna up the rate first, okay? I just say we're gonna go to 80, okay? And now the current is gonna do our capture. So here we go. So we go up, 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 up. See how we're doing? All right, so about 70, we look like we got it. Now, just for fun, I'll just show you, it's a simulator. Let's just say we go to 80, 90, 100. See how nothing's really changed? If I go down to 10 or 20, let's go to 10. See, it hasn't, it hasn't caught it yet, see? So we wanna go all the way up to about 70. Now let's do, well, I'll watch 70. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, okay? So now we're being paced, okay? So now the patient's on, and the current is going through, and everything looks good. So now the patient's being paced. Anytime there's a pacemaker on an EKG, what you're gonna see, I hope you can see it, you can see right here these pacer spikes, see it? So this is what a pace rhythm actually looks like. And this spike right here is the pacer spike, see it? And that's how you do that, okay? So that is how we do our pacer. Now, next thing we're gonna do, over here, you actually transmit an EKG. So if you're gonna transmit it, you can send it uh, to whoever you want to send it to, the transmit method. A code summary, prints out a summary of everything that we've done, all right? Some other things here you may not know about is the options button. So the options button shows uh, options for patient information, as you can see here. Now, if you go back, we just hit the home screen. Okay, go back to options. Okay, see so you, you have archives. The archives will show you former patients. What you wanna do, and I'll show you here, is you're gonna go to options, and you always do what they call a user test on the heart monitor. So what this does, uh, you click the knob here. What gets printed out right here is a user test, uh, it'll say user test pass or failed. Now it's passed here, you can see today's date and time, okay? So that shows that your life pack is in good working order. So that is most of the functions here in the life pack. Other options, date, time, alarm volumes, uh, print options are all inside of here as well. So if you're one of these three people, if you're preparing for school, if you're currently in school, or if you're preparing for your national registry, you gotta see us down the link in the description, prepareforeems.com, down in the description down below. Click that link, you'll see a video on there, it explains everything about the program. I'm giving you a lifetime access, plus, the actual community group where you can ask me questions directly in that group. So if you're one of those three people, click the link down below in the description. Everybody, I will see you next time. Thank you for the kind words. Thank you for the shout outs, the recommendations. I really appreciate it. And I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Kept, oh, like everything that you were saying was just connecting all these all these you know links inside my brain and i i just knew right then and there um i have to have this program i have to have all the information that he's willing to give i need all of it i went through it i i spent the time and money in other areas and i'm, I'm just gonna let you guys know that uh this was everything i was searching for the whole time the first couple of videos i watched um what i noticed it, it just i i just immediately started connecting dots um, on some of these things I, I didn't have grasped. Went on there that I continued reviewing and I did it for about a month and you know, it, it helped a lot. Like I said, even after school and I took that test one time and I passed it. Your particular program, you have your students engaging and you have your students discussing and you have your students actually using your products. And I'm seeing time and time again, um, students that are coming in and announcing their 
new certification with National Registry. Well, it's obviously passing the exam, doing it pretty quickly, 70 questions in about an hour. Um, well, you definitely are like how your videos are. Like I wasn't sure how it was going to be, but you are how you, your videos are. So that was awesome. So people who are getting ready for paramedic school, or if you're getting ready to go in the Navy as a corpsman or as an Army medic, um, you got to prepare yourself. Evan, I know you got a program that helps people prepare that way. So bottom line is, guys, you don't ever want to hear something for the first time with a bunch of other students. So if you're in a competitive learning environment, you don't want to hear about AFib for the first time where everybody else, you want to have an understanding of it before you walk in the room. From 120 questions, passing two sections, um, near passing one, and then I think two below passing to seven questions passing completely. $7,000 for school plus everything else that you put into it all the time and all the time off work and family and everything. It's to see people fail and fail and fail and then just quit, which I know a couple of people who have. I tend to say, you know, it doesn't hurt to have somebody right there to talk to, you know, send a question. Anytime I get the chance, I'll, I'll gladly offer or advise them to sign up for you and your paramedic coach. It's, it's truly helpful and amazing at what you do. I want to help decrease failure rates for NREMT, for EMT school, for paramedic school. Watch these videos, watch this content, and believe me, you will start to understand EMS medicine. Anybody out there that wants to serve their community as an EMT or a paramedic should be able to do that. And I'm here as a paramedic coach to help you achieve that.